definitely made a conscious effort, like 19 or 20, I became a born again Christian. The dunk, the whole thing was like, oh my God, life's amazing. Jesus is great. And then I ended up falling away from that because I was like, I don't know if this is true. And, and then I spent the next five years dedicated to apologetics, which is defense of faith of the Christian faith. So just learning the arguments around like why Christianity is true, mm -hmm. right? I ended up not believing on, uh, in it. And I can give a variety of reasons, but I'll, I'll give you the simplest one. Hopefully I'm not insulting anyone. This is just my belief that I'm sharing, which is a lot of one of the biggest, one of the strongest arguments for Christianity against other world religions is that other world religions say like, if you go to the good place, so if you do a good job, you go to the good place. Right. And fundamentally that's, it's a, it's a hard paradigm because it means that like, at what point are you 51% good versus 49%? Should I have just held one more door open and I would have gone to the good place forever? Not even talking about like finite circumstances and creating infinite outcomes, but like whatever. And so if you can draw that line, then it makes it, it kind of makes it ridiculous, right? It like kind of breaks down on the like be a good person system. And so that's all worldviews with the exception of Buddhism and Christianity. With Christianity, they're like, you don't have to be good, you just have to have faith. And if you have faith in Jesus and you go to the good place, right? And so the the reason that for me fundamentally I didn't believe in that was because you actually create another false binary, which is believe or not believe. When in reality is to what extent you believe. It's how hard you believe. And again you create another 50% line, which is should I believe one percent more. And then I would go mm. into the good place forever. So so anyways, the point is, is that I, I studied apologetics for a long period of time and then I was really sad and I was just like F being sad. And I was like, fuck happiness. I was like, I'm just going to do stuff that I think is cool. And that was like, that was like the first break in the chain for me. Um, my slogan to myself was actually just. Subhanallah, bro. Mm. Let's go. Alex Hormozzi. Man, I got love for this dude, bro. He got, he put so much stuff out there that's helped out. Founder and CEO of Acquisition.com. This is not a paid sponsor, by the way, but I got his book right here. I've been reading. Yeah, and, hey, as well. and he ain't even trying to sell you nothing. He's not even trying to sell you nothing. He's a, he's a smart guy. Alex, if you're watching this, bro, we thank you for all the benefit that you're giving free to promo. the world. To Dunya. Yeah, literally free. I just want to make oh, this man. clear, too, that the fact that he was born as a Christian, but he's putting two and two together about how there's yeah. some things that are contradictions, right? And again, this is our worldview. Just like he said, we're not trying to offend anyone. But you got to realize that just to believe in something without being held to an account and, and to a standard on what you do, it's kind of nonsensical, bro. And he's realizing that he's seen it. What you're saying about like 49%, 51%, what if, what if I would just like held that door open? Like, would I have gotten that extra percent? God tells us very clearly, like, you do good in this world. You be the best person that you can be and you worship you worship me alone. You worship God alone. That's it. In the end, when we are brought up for judgment, it's not our deeds that's going to get us to the good place. See, that's where Christianity falls short. And I myself seen this when I was asking questions in Christianity. I couldn't understand. I was like, how can I just believe in Jesus? Peace be upon him. And then it's like everything's just, oh, okay, I'm going to heaven instantly. Like, that didn't make sense. There was no... Um, accountability there was no responsibility so for me when i came to islam like i seen like okay yes we do good but in the end like allah is gonna judge god is gonna judge so it's not the good deeds that get you into heaven it's ultimately the mercy of god if god chooses to let you into heaven then you will be accepted into heaven yeah facts 100 percent. and when it comes to this idea of of heaven versus hell i think the christian understanding is that heaven forever hell forever no room for, for effiness you don't go to hell and then go to heaven it's one or the other in islam you can have people who believe in allah who believe in islam who practice it that fell short or maybe they for a period of time associated partners with god or something that renders them accountable for and, and responsible uh, and it gives them some kind of punishment as you know as a result god would punish them until they have uh, basically atoned for whatever they committed and then admit them into jannah so it's not always a hard 50-50. And just imagine, bro, there's so many debates where we saw people ask basically Christians, right? Christian apologetics that do you believe that if you believe in Christ, but you commit X, Y, and Z being heinous crimes, both legally and religiously, you would go to heaven. And they were like, yes. And they were like, why? Because we believe. Bro, how does that make sense? As a Muslim, we can't just say, I believe, and that we won't have anything sent our way and we won't have hardships. Allah says in the Quran that they think they'll say that I believe and that they won't be tested. You know, so the believers will have tests. I would even say more sometimes than the disbelievers because abundance might be a bigger test than scarcity. But not just that, but to say you'll believe, but then that's it. There's no other criteria. There's no Sharia. That's why in Islam we have Aqidah, which is the belief, but then we have Sharia, which is halal and haram. Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you giving charity? Are you paying your zakat? If you can, you know, are you good to your wives? Are you good to your family? Are you taking care of your loved ones? Are you praying? Are you worshiping God? Are you helping those in need? 
Are you helping the poor? There's so much in Islam to keep you busy after you say the Shahada, after you declare your faith. So subhanAllah, I think this is an all-encompassing faith, uh, a perfect religion, a complete deen. doesn't just end with, I believe. I believe in God. Nah, there's yeah. way more to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, he mentions that he doesn't accept blind faith, right? Allah doesn't accept blind faith. So there's no such thing as, oh, I, I, I'm a Muslim because I, I just believe in it. Actually, Iman, which is the, the term people used to usually translate as being faith, it actually means conviction, rational conviction. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks in the Quran, do they not reflect over the Quran? Do they not look at the signs of your Lord? <laughs> Meaning in Surah Al-Najm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, Fabi'ay ala irabbika tatamara. Which of your, you know, which of the favors of your Lord do you dispute? It's not even a question of do you recognize it. It's 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 a fact. It's a it's a favor of your Lord, a sign of your Lord. Which of these favors of these signs are you going to even try and dispute? So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us to appeal to our aql, our intellect, our knowledge, our wisdom, and uh, the evidences that we have. Mm -hmm. And when we're in doubt, to go to the professionals, as He says in the Quran, and not just base it off of blind faith, like they have in Christianity. Mm, and bro, the thing with Islam is just like what you were saying that you can't just say you believe. There's so much more you gotta do. In Ramadan, bro, there's there's no limit to how much we can give, bro. And that's the thing with sadaqah and just, just zakat and just giving to those in need, paying the orphans, paying the poor, and just, just sharing the wealth. That I know Alex Hormozzi, bro. I know I know he's deep into finance and, and the economic framework that we have in the West. But in Islam, the, the financial framework is not that money goes up from the poor to the rich to keep them richer. In Islam, the money comes down from the rich to the poor. Right. So we pay it forward. And one of the best things you can do, guys, is Sadaka. So in Ramadan, we've partnered up with a masjid, bro. And this masjid has been consistently going above and beyond. And it blows our mind the amount of work that the sheikh is doing just to help those in need. So inshallah, if you guys want to support it this Ramadan, I think it's a perfect time. Link in the description.